The United States has special ops forces, meaning intelligence and military operations, in more countries than they have embassies. They have embassies in roughly one-third of all the countries in the world, but they have special ops forces in roughly three-fourths of all the countries on Earth. The U.S. has carried out at least 469 military interventions since 1798, but more than half of those have been carried out in just the last 30 years. In other words, they've carried out more military operations around the world in just the past three decades than in the preceding 200 years. If you combine the total spending of the top 10 military budgets in the world, the countries that spend the most on their militaries, if you combine that total, it still won't equal what the United States spends on their military. Now, these 250 or so military interventions since 1991 have been primarily carried out for economic reasons, to control resources, access to resources, access to markets, to control markets, and so on. The use of the American military has been disproportionately for the sake of business. It has not been ideological, it has not been nationalistic, it has not been religious, and it has not been to spread democracy. The U.S. military does not enter a country except that it is either following or followed by businessmen. Now, I'm saying all of this to explain that whenever we talk about the U.S. doing this or that, we're not talking about the United States per se. We are talking about the military and political power of the U.S. being mobilized or being used to promote or secure or protect the interests of a financial elite who may or may not be American, but who are themselves not loyal to the U.S. This has to be understood. Whenever people start talking about uh, the world moving from being a unipolar world to a multipolar world, because you're simply mistaken if you believe that the United States of America is in and of itself the unipolar power in global affairs. The U.S. is simply the strongest and most coercive instrument of power in the world. And it is utilized by a contingent of financial elites who belong to no nation. The owners and controllers of global financialized capital constitute the unipolar power in the world today. It's a private sector power. They are not a country. They are not a nation state. But they dominate global affairs. As long as this remains the case, there is never going to be any genuine multipolarity in international relations. So it would be useful for you to start thinking of investors or thinking of the rich as being their own nationality. Their interests and agendas have nothing to do with the security or well-being of the nations in which they hold citizenship. As we can see now across Europe, this new imperial class of private sector elites have no hesitation in undermining the economic stability, the financial well-being, the living conditions, the quality of life, the peace and tranquility of even Western nations. So before we can confront this reality, we have to recognize it. Nation states do not exist as independent power entities in the West. They are subordinate to a private sector, a national class of imperialistic owners of capital. The Western neoliberal political and economic models are hostile to national sovereignty. They're hostile to democracy. They're hostile to independent government, and they're hostile to any iteration of a social contract. In these models, the highest duty of every citizen, of every institution, of every government, is to contribute to corporate profits. It is quite simply greed gone mad.